Welcome to today's episode of Power of the Mind, where we give you simple tools to improve your relationships with yourself and with other people too. Today, we're going to spend some time talking about twins, such an interesting phenomena in our world. To be a twin, we'll talk about what it's like to have twins in a family system, what some of the common challenges are, and what some of the common benefits are. Hope you stay tuned. Hey, everybody. It's Alicia Morgeau with Talking Glass Media, and I'm here, as always, with my favorite Greg Struvy with our Power of the Mind with uh, Greta Mountain Behavioral Health and Healthcare. As I always say, it's my favorite part of the week. And um, how's your week going? Oh, it's good. good. I'm really glad to be your favorite Greg Struvy. It is my of favorite. All the Greg Struvies of, around, I am, I well, am at the top of the list. That makes me really top happy. Top three. Top three. Yeah. That's good. I mean, there's, a co- like, there's one Greg Struvy. Out of this world. <laughs> there totally is a Greg Struvy who uh, uh, was like, when I was growing up, there was a girl named Struvy at a school that my sister went to, and her dad's name was Greg. Hmm. And then I went to the bank uh, in Minnesota, and at the bank, I was like, I'm Greg Struvy. And one day they told me what his account balance was. So nice. he was doing well for himself at the okay. time. I was pretty impressed with the, all, the other Greg Struvy. All right. He was doing great. So. I don't think there is another Elisha Morjo out there. It's ever. kind of a cool name. It's kind of cool. I didn't know yeah. how it was pronounced till today. So. Yeah, I uh, memorized spelling Margeau. it all the way to Vegas when we were getting married. It's like oh. M O R. Okay, that's so oh, interesting. Did, it's a good job there. That's yeah, a good name. Love it. So we are in the middle of family dynamics. We are, and I love it. And it we're was, all in the middle of family dynamics. <laughs> right. I think all that's what we said last week. You're either from a family, are a family, going to be a family. Yeah, it's yeah. it's happening. Everybody's doing it. So. Oh, one thing that the questions that have been coming at me are twins. Oh, yeah. How yeah. are twins factoring into this family dynamic? Oh, man, that's fun. That's fun. Okay, so we'll spend some time talking about twins today for sure. I'm from the Twin Cities, actually, and I have twins. So that's pretty interesting. Oh. My daughters I have identical twin daughters who are 13 years old. I had so. no idea. So you know first. Are they well, your oldest, youngest? My onlys. Oh. We, we were efficient. Everybody else takes a couple years to have two kids. We did it right away. Knocked it out. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. There's a lot to be said about twins and kind of how that that process can work as far as the birth order piece goes. You know, when we think about birth order, we've talked about how the oldest is often the hero, the middle is often the mediator, and the uh, youngest is often the mascot. And then you have sort of a lost child floating around in there someplace and a scapegoat, you know, causing trouble and, and shaking things up. We really think about the roles less as being related to birth order and more about being related to the simplest way to differentiate myself. Mm -hmm. I need to differentiate myself from my siblings in order to function effectively in the house and to have a place because nobody wants to be nobody because if I don't have a place, I'm in a little bit of danger, right? So so that's the, the function of the roles in the family system. With twins, what we'll find are a couple of really interesting things. As with many children and and, uh, a dyad, a pair of twins, they'll often mirror the parents in their environment. And one will take after one and one will often take after the other. Sometimes they'll stick with the traditional family roles and and birth order, but a lot of times they won't. And what I've found is in their development, they'll switch off between who is kind of the the more dominant twin and the less dominant twin. I've, I've found that typically there is one that tends to be a bit more outgoing and one that tends to be a bit less and that they'll often talk for one another and, and do some of those things. And um, there's all kinds of different philosophies on twins. I was very interested in the, the twin thing when I found out I was going to have some. And uh, as with any f- first, not with any, but with a lot of first time parents who are heroes in their family system, my wife and I both probably fall into that category. We definitely read some books and looked stuff up and, oh my goodness, what are we going to do to have twins? How do we have twins? There was a lot of discussion about whether they should be in the same class. Should they be in the same class only for a couple of years and then switch mm-hmm. classrooms so they can develop individual personalities or do they stay together? Should we make them uh, wear different clothing? Should you name them with names that are, you know, alliterate like, you know, Todd and Tim and, and all these yeah, things. And Mandy, Sandy. It's, uh, whatever it is to, you know, how do we how do we make it work when two kids are the same age? And the answer is ultimately we don't really know. <laughs> um, nobody really knows the, 
there's a lot of factors that go into a human being's life and being a twin has some strong advantages to it as far as I can tell. Um, but it's, it's just one of a, a large number of factors that come into play with it. So the, the most interesting piece for me when I look at the potential of a twin really comes down to the attachment process. So all human beings have a deep need to attach to their caregivers. It's right up there with the need for food and water. And that attachment system comes online right away, usually with the child attaching to the primary caregiver who in most cases is gonna be the mother. So the relationship between the, the infant and the mother is really interesting and it's been studied really extensively. And you can get on Google and look up the attachment process. You're going to have the most success if you Google things like um, secure attachment, anxious ambivalent attachment, avoidant attachment, or um, disorganized attachment. Those are the four sort of broad categories of attachment styles that a human being will develop over their lifetime. Generally, they'll develop it within the first few years of life and then repeat it as long as they live. Uh, sometimes it'll grow and change in relationships later in life, but it tends to be pretty well set pretty early. Which of the attachment styles a human being adopts has a lot to do with their environment and how to best find success in that environment. And with twins, what's interesting is they always have somebody there, no matter what happens. With an only child, for example, they're often quite lonely. Mm -hmm. um, it's very lonely to be an only child in a world full of giants. And they'll tend to grow up very quickly because the adult conversations are what's happening around them. And that's what they need to do to, to hang out. Um, with a middle child, uh, another example of a situation where perhaps there can be some overlooking or neglect or something like that. Uh, the middle child will often have siblings to connect with. Uh, youngest child, oldest child, they all have it, different dynamics, but the siblings I connect with are not necessarily direct peers. They're going to be older or younger, right? So there's going to be a power differential one way or the other. When twins come out, they're the same size, they're the same age, and in theory, they have similar abilities depending on whether they're identical um, or not. So it's really interesting to see what is life like when I don't really have to contend with being alone until much later in life. And I think, I think there's probably some strong advantages to having another nervous system around you. Now, again, all that can be, that advantage will probably only take you so far in a really chaotic or difficult family system. Um, it can be difficult no matter whether there's somebody with you or not. That said, Human beings, and little humans in particular, tend to do pretty well when they have other human beings around. We're kind of habituated to, to work that way. So I think there's a lot of merit to it. Well, and you see the pictures or the videos of those twins that are just holding on to each other, even at, like at infants. They just, you know, they've shared all that time together in the womb, and they're just so comfortable. Right. And, I mean, how special to have that. Yeah. You know? and, do you see a huge difference between like male twins and female twins? It's um, I don't know about that. I've not seen much difference that way. I'm not a twin expert. I haven't worked with a ton of twins. I, just, I'm, I have some, so that probably puts me more a, of an expert a little bit ahead of the of curve us, with yeah. some. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I have had plenty of, of twins sort of incidentally mm -hmm. in my in my practice over the years, but I don't see a significant difference gender wise. I do think it makes a difference where they fall in the birth order and, and kind of how that goes. So, yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Do you mind if we take a couple? We've got a couple questions that came yeah, in. Yeah, sure. And... That's exciting. Okay. So oh, yeah, up here on the board. First one. I can show off. I have a giant divot in my head nice. right here. So that's for the camera. There you go. Nice. You can't see that if you're listening. Yeah, it's fine. Totally I got fine. A, I got an it, exciting. Although if you want to see it, please you know, check us out I'm on signalsaz.com. There you go. Out. Yes. <laughs> Tune into Signals AZ so you can see Greg's Dayglo Band-Aid. Nice. On his giant noggin. That's nice. yeah. That doesn't bring in the let's hits. Do a, I don't know let's what do a will. bright one. Oh, yeah. we could have done a green one. I would have blended. That would have, Oh, that's a good that's idea. Good. Too bad. I'm going to get a green. So right. okay. The majority of our questions today, we've got two sets of twins that uh, were very interested in this topic. Sure. Um, this first set, I'll give you a little background of you know our first set of questions that are coming in. This is a. Um, she is. She, she has identical twin sister. 
Sure. They are from a large family. Yes. They yes. have, um, and there's a huge gap between oh, okay. the, so a little the last kid and then the twins. Surprise. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's sure, what sure. that was. And they are 56 minutes apart, which okay. we were looking it up and it was like, wow, that's a huge, you know, span, you know, between. It's a so, long time. Can be, yeah. Uh, so yeah, just a little bit of background on there. But first question is, does there tend to be curiosity, jealousy, or envy among the other siblings towards twins? Oh, sure. Well, sibling rivalry and envy between siblings is, you know, goes back as far as time. Baby birds will throw each other out of the nest if there's a food shortage. Like that's in our <laughs> biology to turn pretty hard. I think my kids have done that actually, to their <laughs> sibling. <laughs> so that's in our biology um, to to have a lot of sibling rivalry, and it's actually one of the most interesting things to work with clinically. As we are, you know, the goal with really effective clinical work isn't necessarily to to get better, although that's part of it. It's to become more whole, right? And and that's the process by which we get better normally. If you think about what therapy and and counseling is. I'm taking something that is more or less hidden or disconnected from myself, and I'm allowing it to integrate, usually with a fair amount of pain. Most people don't disconnect from all their joy and happiness, right? They don't come into therapy because everything's been going so great and they want to get more connected with that, and maybe they do. Generally speaking, we have something we've disconnected from, and we need to integrate it and find a way, how do I deal with the fact that I'm grieving the loss of this person, this relationship, this thing. How do I deal with um, my, you know, if somebody's seeking counseling for depression, depression is almost always an in- inward temper tantrum. There's often biology attached to it as well, but from a psychological perspective, depression is almost always anger turned inward. So how do I integrate that anger and kind of figure that part out? And then also, how do I deal with the trauma or the difficult experiences that were too difficult for me to deal with as a kid now that they're coming up and interfering with my life? And sibling trauma is a real deal. And it's really, it's overlooked even in the field, even in the profession, you know, how, how cruel siblings can be to one another. Um, and for many generations, it was looked on as a fact of life because more or less it was, it was true. Mm-hmm. And I always like to get previous generations off the hook and point out that most of the time we were just trying to eat Nobody had time to decide to uh, be nice to each other and try to uh, do things like that. And you know, they, we grew into that over the millennia. But um, so, so the idea that siblings will fight is really part of the process as far as I can tell. There are a lot of different things that can differentiate one sibling from another, but being a twin is very much uh, a challenge for another sibling simply because immediately you have a situation where somebody else is special and they're doing something you can't do, right? Right? Twins are a novelty. They're happening more often now, which is an interesting fact of life. Nobody really knows why we're having more twins now than we have historically. But in general, twins are a bit of a novelty. People notice twins and notice them in public, get kind of excited. If you hang out with twins in public, people will walk up to you and say, oh, you're a twin, I'm a twin. They're a twin, I'm a twin. I'm, you're part of the club. Or people right. will say, are they twins? It's just a great right. conversation starter. It's a great piece of, of it's something to think about. And so it's really common for the sibling of a twin, especially if it's a single sibling, an older or a younger, a sibling of a, of a set of twins, to feel pretty left out. If we're going to make the family constellation, I, I'd say there's a decent chance that the sibling of the twins is going to fall into that lost child category at least part of the time. The other thing to think about is one of the biggest challenges where we get the family roles in birth order is that at some point in time, if I'm a firstborn child and my parent has a, an infant, an infant is a lot. Infants are a lot of, like they're a crazy amount of work. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm a two-year-old and I've been hanging out with mom and dad and everybody's been thinking about how great I am and excited to have me, and now this interloper comes in and now mom and dad especially mom, is focused on this little one. Because man, oh man, they are just, they need everything, right? Mm-hmm. They need 100% of your time. And so now I've gone from the center of the world to kind of a nuisance and a pain in the butt. And maybe I have a, a parent, especially if I have a parent who is preoccupied with other challenges in life. In a, in a perfect situation where everything's, where we have a happy relationship at home and 
plenty of money, plenty of pl- plenty of food and money, and everything's great. It's still a ton of work to have a kid. Mm-hmm. Now you add the modern challenges that come up, where um, you know maybe there's a career that that one or both parents are pursuing. Maybe there isn't enough money all the time. Maybe the uh, the relationship is not awesome. Whoa, we really right. have just things have just gotten very very complex. So now do that, except add another kid, and it's bananas. Right. I mean, just in case things weren't crazy hard already, I was lucky. I remember in the book, uh, uh, one of the parents said, "You know, if I had it to do over again, the only thing I would change is I'd recommend having the twins first, because if you have them second, you realize how much harder they are, <laughs> how much harder it is to have two. Right. But we want to think about that specifically in terms of how it might impact the other siblings in the dynamic." any older siblings, we're already, then it's really normal to have sort of a jealousy and a, a challenge related to the arrival of some new kids. But holy moly, when there's two of them, there's even more of a sense of, hey, where'd everybody go? What the heck just happened here? Mm-hmm. And how do I deal with it? And who am I now? And, and they're so amazing. System. You know, the yeah. twin thing is so, <laughs> and, yeah. and then they also, the other thing is, is they have a connection that other people just don't have other even sibling once in a while you get siblings who are really tight and really close to each other but uh, twins oftentimes will have a connection that's pretty unique mm-hmm. now, not always you will have some twins I had a client one time uh, what did they call them but they were opposite twins one was tall one was short one was successful and one was rebellious and uh, they were just opposites in every way they were rivals with each other that's often not always but often a product of a family system where the parents are rivals with each other as well. So if if parents are rivals, and even if it's sort of underlying or underneath stuff, you will find that the siblings will take that on to some degree. You'll often find the firstborn aligning with dad, the secondborn in a patriarchal family. The firstborn will align with dad, the secondborn will align with mom, and the thirdborn will often show the, the secrets of the family system <laughs> in a scapegoaty <laughs> kind of way. And again, those are generalities. It's only, uh, I do think it's the majority of the time that you'll see that pattern happen, but it's certainly not universal by any means. But that's a sort of an interesting rule of thumb to chase down and to look at. So when we do have family, uh, when we do have dyads in the family system that are really oppositional to each other, especially if they're number one and number two in the family system, I'm often going to look for a lot of tension and rivalry between the parents. Yeah, I was going to ask that because another set of twins that we were able to talk to this week are brothers and mm-hmm. they are firstborn brothers and then they have a little brother. Oh, sure. And so that dynamic has got to be, you know, crazy because I would think our boys are going to already want to, you know, battle, but does that change with twins or, you know, you've got the hero and, you know, how does that work when you've got two, you know, strong boys born and, <laughs> and where's that dynamic falling? Sure, in? sure. Well, it would really depend on the family system as far as I can tell. You know, we have uh, some friends who have some twin boys and they're hysterically funny and they fight like, I mean, they fight and they throw some punches and they have to be separated with some regularity. Uh, but they're also, you know, best of friends and pretty tight. It really depends on the family system in terms of the development of, of a rivalry and um, I do think there's probably something to be said for human beings coming in. You know, I'm not a tabula rasa kind of guy. I think we probably come in with some material, either genetically or spiritually or some other way that leans us in that direction. But then our environment, too, you know, is uh, whether this person across from me is a friend or a foe often will have a lot to do with those first five, six years of life and how much of that energy is in the house. The other really interesting thing you sit down with kids, you discover that that they're able to pick up on stuff energetically that we don't really understand yet how to measure. So if I have somebody who comes in to see me who um, has for, oh, so example, for one example I can think of is I had a kid who came in and talked to me a lot for a while and uh, the parents were concerned because this kid was, was hypersexual and they were really... Um, challenged about that and the uh, without going into great detail you know we discovered that within the family system there was some things happening that weren't explicit in terms of sexual abuse but there was just some material coming up that uh, a lot of energy in the family that had been unidentified up to that point and the kid I think was just picking up on it 
right? right? That nobody was doing anything inappropriately, inappropriate to the kid, but they were around the kid enough that the energy somehow, and I've seen that happen so many times that I don't know how to measure it exactly, but growing up in an environment with a lot of fear, for example, a kid will, will just pick up that fear. Um, yes. So any, any kind of energetic sort of thing that happens, if there's a lot of anger in the system, you get you know anybody, especially up to the age of six. Once we turn six, we can start to develop some boundaries. And then particularly around the age of 12 or 13, we, we are moving in a different direction some of the time. But prior to six, a lot of what you see oftentimes is a reflection for better or for worse of what's happening in the family system and in the dynamic between the parents and everybody living in the household. Interesting. I'll go to the, uh, how are twins perceived by the other siblings? So I think we kind of touched on that a yeah, little bit. Yeah, we kind of did that one. That's... What's our next one? Is there a different relationship between the parents and the twins than with the other siblings? Well, I suppose that depends primarily on the parents. And uh, well, I guess, you know what, the answer is always yes because there's a different relationship between the parent and every kid. And the reason for, you know, we would like to all love our kids equally. And I think it's probably fair to say that a lot of us do love our kids equally, but that doesn't mean we relate to our kids equally or like our kids equally. We're gonna tend to like the kids who are um, uh, who we're just most compatible with. And that depends on the role that they play. Um, so every parent is gonna relate to every kid differently. and. The thing I'll say about twins is, as a parent, one thing I have to watch out for, I think, is it can be pretty easy to let them take care of each other. Good point. So that's something that I'm uh, very aware of in my parenting in terms of being intentional about giving them time. Uh, each of them get time every week with just them and me. And I think that's probably been important. That's mostly my wife's doing, actually. She's very <laughs> uh, smart about those things. Um, so that's, that's something to think about too. I, I don't know how else a parent's role would, uh, change or pardon me, our parent's attitude would change or shift mm -hmm. toward a twin. I don't know how to make a generality about that. We'd have to discover more about the family system. And, you know, you mentioned the, the group of, of the, the pair of twins that came late. Yeah. When a kid comes late, oftentimes parents are very relaxed in their parenting style, very laid back, particularly as compared to the other twins or the other yeah. kids. So of course, in that situation, they're very much going to have a, a different experience of childhood than the other ones. Well, and this question I like, the next one coming up is be, kind of oh, led me yeah. down this path. You know, her and her twin sister are 56 minutes apart, which I thought was a huge, you know, difference. But she does look at her big sister as the big sister and the older sister. So I was very, I wondered, you know, if you're both firstborns, are you going to take over that? Both of you are going to try to, you know, fight for that hero role or does that happen automatically? But with them, it, it seems as if she was very easy to just step back and let sister be the big sister and, mm -hmm. and do that. So I just wondered if that was, as I'm talking to you a little bit more, it seems like birth order doesn't necessarily mean who's going to be the hero or who's going to be the, so I think it'd be the same in twins. So even yeah, if they're identical, exactly. they kind of find their role. And, and yeah. And when I've worked with kids who are twins over the years, what I've found is that they'll often trade off a couple of times before they really settle on which role they play. They probably are more fluid in their, their roles in the family system than other siblings are. Um, but I, I have found there tends to be one who moves into a hero role and one who moves into more of a mediator or a mascot role. And I find the mediator actually is probably more common with twins for the secondary role than the hero or than the mediator rather. And it doesn't necessarily relate, you know, in this case, one is born ahead of the other and the family, the parents talk about that. And, you know, there are some in Adlerian circles, Adleri I was I'm trained as an Adlerian counselor originally who say you shouldn't tell the twins who was born first until they get older so that nobody right. you know wants to and I, I ah, whatever I mean they, they're gonna pick the role they pick and sometimes the oldest one will be the hero and be the the more outspoken and directive of the two and sometimes it'll be the second one and I've not found a pattern necessarily they, they kind of decided amongst themselves based on disposition and right 
I would have to imagine that. I mean, you know, some are even closer than that. You know, our, sure. our other set of twins. I was mine talking are, to mine are a minute apart. And does boom, it? Boom. Yeah, I can't Nothing imagine who would who would make the. Oh, I was first born, so I'm you know, the strong one. Sure. How's our questions coming over there? We actually have one of our our twins in oh. our audience today. So. Yes. So they're coming up with. Are we good? We have one. Oh, yeah. okay. oh, they're thinking. So what's interesting is one of my coworkers um, at Signals, her husband is a twin. Mm, sure. And so talking with her, it was very interesting. And even talking with him, if, you know, just for a few minutes, it was, well, I'm the older twin, you know, and mm. that was very important, you know, and sure. they're, and they're boys. And so I thought, you know, that's probably something more important to boys than maybe to girls. Cause it's the older and, and I think that that kind of plays a role in their, you know, especially with boys. Oh, fraternal versus identical. Oh, so. sure. Well, just to answer what you're saying before, again, I found it it makes, in my experience, it has a lot more to do with the family system of a particular individual versus gender. I'm not, I've, I've seen, I can think of a set of twins uh, I was involved with at one point where, you know, one was very, um, you know, there was quite a bit of rivalry and they were they were female. So I do think they can be that way, yeah. and, and it does it does tend to come out of the family system. But in terms of fraternal versus identical, um, I've seen some differences when there's a difference in gender. Um, but when we have the same gender twins born, I, 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 I don't see a significant difference between fraternal and identical. Hmm. Interesting. One interesting thing, if there's a difference in gender and there's another sibling, is it sort of gives the other sibling an in. Yeah, you know, an opportunity to kind of kind of jump in there a little bit. So that can be part of the process. But that does make sense, you know, yeah. boy and girl. And then I've got a little sister and we've got more in common than even my own twin. So interesting. Right. Well, this was fun kind of yeah. just going around that and and just hearing the, you know, g knowing these people and knowing, you know, the one gal the way I do, you know, super, super perf perfectionist. But I think her sister's the same way. And it's just awesome to kind of see that, you know, both of them cut from the exact same cloth. And, but I liked the kind of the idea of, you know, just seeing how they pick their roles in the family and how they, and how that ends up and how they change and adapt to that. And we answer all your questions over here, my little peanut gallery. So, but I thought this was great. And, um, what I'm, I'm loving is that we are getting more questions and we're starting to, yeah. to dive into what's really interesting to, to our listeners and to our watchers. And, um, so we just, you know, really ask you guys to send stuff in and, you know, we didn't use names we didn't talk about it, you know, and, <laughs> and there are people like, I don't care, tell them who I am. It's not a big deal, but totally anonymous. If you just want to ask him for a friend. And sometimes I've done that. Hey, Greg, ask him for a friend. Like, oh, sure, tell me about this. Sure. So, so I'm excited about that. And, um, just, don't know if we want to continue going down the the family path, but it it's been super oh, interesting. I'm enjoying it. I think next yeah. week we we're going to talk about the hero. So oh, we'll, uh, we'll see if we hero. can squeeze that in there. And yes. Yeah, it's always fun to yeah. talk about this stuff. And yeah, if anybody has any questions, anything they want to have discussed, we'd be happy to talk about it. So absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and um, I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am, and continue to throw those questions out there. Again, I'm Alicia and Greg Struvy with Granite Mountain Behavioral Health Care, and this has been Power of the Mind. If you have a question or something you'd like us to discuss here on Power of the Mind, we would love to hear from you. Our email address is stories, S-T-O-R-I-E-S, -E at signalsaz.com. That's stories, S-T-O-R-I-E-S, -E at signals, S-I-G-N-A-L-S-A-Z.com. Look forward to hearing from you.